Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I am Yori Folari. Um, uh, the, the president um, has really recently concluded a successful uh, diplomatic outing. Uh, it was all over the news. Uh, he was in China and um, a number of summits were held. And, um, you know, so that's what we will be looking at this morning, the potentials for, you know, uh, the country in those deals. Quite a number of deals were, were you know, were reached. And um, my guest this morning is a veteran journalist, writer, policy analyst, Mr. Ni Akishiju. He joins us uh, remotely from our Abuja studio. Good morning to you, Mr. Akishiju. Good morning, sir. Thank you very you. much. For, thank you very much for making the time available uh, for us uh, out of your tight schedule uh, this morning. Now, now, let me just, um, we have heard from the president on this matter uh, in terms of um, his uh, enthusiasm and um, the potential for all of these. He went with uh, a comprehensive team, not just ministers, but also state governors. And um, a lot of opportunities emerged. Deals were signed, ministers signed deals, governors signed deals. And that's apart from the president himself. Now, let me just jump in with both feet and say a number of people, um, after being encouraged by the president's assessment and indeed what we did see by ourselves, um, they still have apprehensions about how is all of this going to be paid for? Uh, because it's not a charity uh, show uh, from the Chinese government. There are all sorts of... Um, dynamics involved. On the one hand, uh, China, you know, is very interested uh, on the global stage, and especially as it relates with Africa. There's that competition there between China and America. Uh, and then they have shown, shall I say, the Chinese have shown that, look, business is business. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, we had some sovereign assets uh, that were actually seized were quite recently. Uh, and these were assets that, you know, where the, China, the, the Chinese government uh, was actually involved in all of this. None of it done spitefully. All of it, from the point of view of business, is business. Now, so I guess that my preamble is to sort of set the scene for why some people are a bit concerned. And can you allay our fears, uh, allay our, our fears, I beg your pardon, can you allay our fears as to that particular uh, provision. We have been known to default in the past. Uh, if any such default were to happen now, what would it be pretending for those deals? Let me just start from there and the other questions will be coming along. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think we need to also properly situate the context you know, of uh, the president visit. Uh, as you noted, uh, you you described it as a, a diplomatic shuttle. Yes, it is a diplomatic shuttle, but much more than that, it is an economic uh, diplomatic uh, shuttle, what you call uh, economic diplomacy. Uh, where you have economic diplomacy, the principal theme of uh, any visitation uh, under that uh, theme, it's, uh, it has to do with um, engineering or engendering economic mutual economic benefits to the two parties. Yes. And yes. Uh, if you also look at the, the history, uh, either at the level of economic trade and the related issues around the relationship between Nigeria and China. In fact, the truth is that we need China more than China needs us. Uh, if, you, if you look at the recent uh, trade balance, you know, uh, trade, uh, uh, trade treasured between the two countries. Uh, while we have uh, less than uh, 3 billion or 3 percent of exports from Nigerian exports to China, China is the lead import supplier into Nigeria, actually accounting for more than 30 percent of total uh, import trade to Nigeria. And so what that tells you is that we have an imbalance, an, an unfavorable trade term with, uh, with China. So and every sovereign jurisdiction 
at every point in time, desires way to balance or at least to create uh, a sort of relativity that will not be too unfavorable to that jurisdiction when you come to trade matters. Um, and for us to do that, we need China to continue to facilitate you know, the, our capacity in country so that over time we can also grow, especially be able to also meet them at the level of exports you know, for, the, for the kinds of goods and services they may desire. So I think the president had uh, properly and appropriately targeted China in a way that uh, we should, you know, uh, from the disadvantage we are coming from in terms of uh, trade relationship, uh, benefit from their own capacity and capability. And as you also noted, um, relationship with China is not exactly uh, pivoted on, uh, on, uh, <laughs> on the hand interest, sovereign interest driven uh, uh, philosophy as we have with the Western world, those we call the Global North, for instance. Uh, the Global North would always have national interest, you know, guiding whatever forms their relationship uh, with the Global South, especially with, uh, uh, with countries in Africa. Um, China wants to expand, yes, but it wants to expand profitably, and I think there's nothing wrong about that. If, and of course, if they are relating with Nigeria, they want to also relate Nigeria, with Nigeria from the point of view of making some money. And, uh, but for me, as long as the money, I mean, as long as the trading profit is mutual, it's, 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 it's an appropriate uh, interest to drive. So talking specifically about deals that were signed mm -hmm. uh, during the, this uh, last visit by the president, I... I, I think the, the, the important thing, we can first do a flashback. Uh, there was a period between 20, 2008 and uh, perhaps two, 2000, 2020 that uh, the, the, the uh, Chinese, many Chinese companies were involved in so many activities in the country, in Nigeria. Um, uh, Chinese con countries were more or less the drivers of our, our train uh, line constructions, you know, railway line constructions, uh, 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 construction, road constructions, and, and so many other things. Uh, but all of a sudden, I don't know if some if Nigerians have seen, uh, or rather observed, that uh, the tempo you know, of that relationship had gone down. Uh, it's uh, as a result of a number of things. Uh, but I don't think properly it's as a result of, result of default, you know, uh, because they, their relationship with us, either in terms of uh, fiscal or monetary engagement, uh, as, is not up to 20 years, so we cannot be defaulting yet. But the important thing is that there have been a lot of suspicion you know, around uh, their engagement, driven mostly by the Global North, driven mostly by uh, Nigerians that don't even have enough information on the kind of businesses and deals you know, that are being consummated uh, between Nigerian companies and Chinese companies. So going forward, I think what the president has done is to resurrect this relationship. And I can see that he specifically targeted companies that are existing already, that have existing relationship and projects in Nigeria. Chinese railway construction company, for, uh, company, for instance. Chinese uh, civil engineering construction company that had been involved in so many uh, road construction in Nigeria. Uh, why? Why? It's the technology. That's the basic big technology company, you know, perhaps the, the first or second largest in the world that had also been involved in so many activities, trading activities in Nigeria. So, uh, by such engagement, one, that's, that's the resurrection, you know, of what we've had before. And I think going forward, that will also create a lot of activities in different sectors of the Nigerian economy. Mm. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, now, uh, when we look at this uh, resurrection, as you put it, and um, uh, one can understand it's uh, not starting from a clean sheet. Uh, uh, as Mr. President had said, um, he, he, he would like to be seen as a reformer, and um, that there are some, if you're going to be reforming, there are going to be some hard, tough, bold, painful even uh, decisions that will have to be taken. Uh, he was sort of explaining the situation that most Nigerians uh, are perceiving uh, out of, you know, this new dawn, uh, talking about his um, uh, 
uh, uh, re the renewal uh, agenda, economic renewal, and um, all of that. But the part that we ourselves, as Nigerians, on whose behalf all of this is being done, um, it's not insignificant because um, I think I, I've heard it observed that, for instance, a lot of it is in the public sector, if not all of it. It's all about infrastructure, about transportation, about uh, uh, b b b the digital economy and all of that. Um, these are things that Nigerians, that any country, it just happens to be us, we're talking about us now, need to be paying for. Um, I, I, I heard a, a distinguished um, professor uh, talk about Nigerians love, um, you know, s slick infrastructure. They admire it when they see it elsewhere. Uh, but because those are often not, you know, tagged with the responsibility, uh, for instance, you have expressways, tolls will be paid on those expressways. Uh, you have waterways, tolls will be paid. Uh, Nigerians don't understand that. You know that we're just beginning to come out of a notion that uh, electricity should be almost free uh, because I'm a Nigerian. I exist here. I live here. There is a government. What is government doing? It's a question that Nigerians don't want to explore too deeply. So uh, where I'm going about all of this is that there is a part, just as the president and his team are working around the, talk, uh, around the clock on all of this, there's the part... When it comes to the payback, even as you had explained, some of those deals don't come into, uh, they don't come to maturity. I mean, they don't come uh, to, you know, you don't have to begin to repay them immediately. That's a meritorious. But we have to get used to it. Are you sure that, um, and here, this leads directly into corruption within the Nigerian system. Uh, tolls collected, not handed over, and all those kind of things. Uh, Mr. President said that some tough decisions were being made. Um, do you think this has also been accounted for, that the, what has been referred to as the DNA of Nigerians when it comes to these sort of matters? I mean, we will accept it when we hear that, oh, it's tough to live in America, it's tough to live in the UK. You cannot escape paying your dues. You pay for water, you pay for electricity, you pay for all of this, and people accept that in as long as it is there. But bring the same thing here, and our people begin to be very, very uncomfortable. So I'm asking about the attitude of the Nigerian to these good times that Mr. President is setting up. But these good times do not come without a cost. How optimistic are you that Nigerians are fully in understanding on all of these aspects? Well, the, the, the truth of the matter, you have, you have properly established the framework, you know, I, and uh, I, I subscribe to that, uh, uh, to that analysis, uh, as it were. But I, I don't think it's, uh, it's a hopeless situation, you know. Okay. Uh, one, we must first uh, commend, commend uh, Mr. President uh, for the a determination to reform. And uh, <clears throat> because he, he, ha he has one or two options, being a, being a politician, it could take the easy, popular route where we do business as usual and uh, continue the culture uh, as, as we have had, you know, over the past so many years. And uh, for every of his, uh, of his policy, you know, it will be hailed and it will be popular. But again, the, the truth of the matter is over the years, we have been digging ourselves into a hole. And for every passing administration, we go deeper into that, into that hole. So for a politician, especially a popular one, to take the route of hard nose but constructive reformation uh, should be commended. Uh, uh, because we have seen one, two, three, especially his decision on, uh, on uh, square subsidy, for instance, removal of uh, square, square subsidy, harmonization, of uh, the foreign exchange windows, uh, uh, the policy trust of uh, the band A, now popular called band A, you know, as a differentiation, uh, a pricing differentiation uh, for electric usage, and a number of others are talking to how we are supposed to pay appropriately for services rendered, and that that is that is that is good. Uh, over time, we win ourselves out of that. Uh, 
out of that seeming paradise-like welfare state. A welfare state, the way we prove, the way we are seeing it, is where the government, you know, is responsible for everything. But I think it's wrong. There is no, there is no welfare state anywhere any longer. Even back in those days when you still have the dominance of uh, the, the Soviet system, uh, the Marxist system, where perhaps wrongly there was that, uh, there was that outlook or that belief that the government is responsible for everything. No. Uh, the, the government is responsible for critical aspects, you know, of development. And Nigeria is still driving that, you know, within the context of the reform of Mr. President. For instance, a, a professor of uh, veterinary study came out about three or three days ago to tell us that to train a veterinary doctor for, four, for a period of four years, you, you need to spend 45 million naira. 45 million naira. That is the, that's the standard template payment. But in Nigeria University, especially federal government-owned university, the average you know, that you spend through those, those four years will be less than 4 million, more or less, you know, for tuition and, and others. So now, what that tells us is that education is, is seriously, seriously overwhelmingly subsidized in Nigeria. And that is, that is a pass mark for us. We have not always considered that. And the money to subsidize education must come from somewhere. You know? Perhaps if we start understanding the fact that education being subsidized is actually a cost to government. And because it is a cost to government, there should be a consideration for how citizens will be responsible for payment of services in other side, you know, it, as poor as our health services are, it's still assessing health services is still the cheapest possible, you know, uh, uh, health platform anywhere in Africa, you know, especially in general government owned general hospitals, federal government owned general hospitals, federal government tertiary hospitals, the teaching hospitals, you know, and this these are. These are uh, uh, areas or segments of development. These are development catalysts that we need to, to concentrate on in terms of funding. So it's not, it should not be about consum, consum, consumables, you know, like fuel, for instance, that we have made a traditional long-standing, you know, uh, must, must be free item. So I think we need to educate or continue to enlighten Nigerians about the trade-off that we need to make going forward. The trade-off of paying for certain services and, of course, the trade-off of enjoying the benefits of certain services. And that if we're, yes, uh, we've, we've experienced uh, uh, train service on the standard gauge over a period of time uh, between Kano, I mean, Kaduna and Abuja, uh, between Ibadan and Lagos. And those who are there, who are enjoy, enjoy the benefits of these services, know that it is the, the, what they are paying for is worthy of it. You know, the value is worthy of it. And I believe that when government is also able to provide this kind of service in an efficient manner, Nigerians will be appreciative of it and, of course, will be willing to pay for it. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, the other thing, of course, is that, you know, concentrating for the moment on you know, the corollary of all of these um, um, explorations that the president is uh, making, which is that it's not charity, it's going to have to be paid for, but at least we are being provided with a template, with an opportunity to advance if we are willing uh, to become disciplined on it. There's this whole matter about um, what it is, what, what is it that Nigeria is actually uh, bringing to the table. Okay, we, we hear about Unfortunately, crude oil um, is our principal asset. That's a sovereign asset. Uh, but we don't add value uh, to it. Um, if we still have cocoa, I'm not too sure what the figures are there. We don't add value to it the way Ivory Coast is reported to be uh, attempting to do uh, in its own case. It has a lot of cocoa, and it is saying that, you know what, we can't be exporting this thing crude anymore uh, for you to now be sending it right back to us, you know, with up to... 10 times the price. Um, there's that aspect um, of, of, of the equation to how do we get into the habit of also being able to, being able to export uh, more than 
crude value to be adding some level of finishing so that we can begin to have something at, or at all. We, we have to have something. Uh, and that has been a problem for a long time. Um, there was a time when it was said, General Yakubu Gowan, uh, back in the day, that Nigeria's problem is not money, it's how to spend it. Well, those days are very, very long gone. Way long gone. <laughs> now we have to be thinking of what is it that we can be doing to be adding value. And here I'm a bit concerned. Maybe this gives you the opportunity to comment on the scenario that we all as Nigerians witnessed. We're talking about our own you know, privately owned refinery. Privately owned, put that in quotes, because you know government will take a stake in it uh, and all of that. It hasn't been going very, very smoothly. If you listen to the conversation out there, it would appear that there are those who are against any such moves. Now, I'm saying all of this I'll just from the point of view of we're going to have to bring something. We're, we're, we're grateful for the opportunity of China. Um, I think we lost power. Uh, hey, my God. Uh, I, I, Okay, I understand that we're still live. Uh, okay, uh, sorry for that uh, slight break, Mr. Uh, Akishiju. So I, I, I was just uh, sort of imagining uh, the scenario of there's so many things that we have to, because what President Tinobu is doing is that maybe that's not quite the way to express it, but sort of giving us a, a kick in the pants that, you know, we've got to wake up to reality. Nigerians, you know, can do it. We have a reputation of being up and doing around the world. And um, this is going to be called on more than before because this administration wants a better deal for all Nigerians. But Nigerians can't continue to be on the backside and expect that um, things are going to change. So it's a matter of what do we bring, how, how, how do we get into this set, this mindset of... Um, actually exporting value uh, so that we can begin to, because we have to survive even as we are paying these debts that will come. Yeah, I, I think um, the, the president is doing, is doing well uh, because um, I, I always like to put things in historical perspective. Uh, one, if the appropriate policy had been deliberately conceived and deployed, we wouldn't find ourselves in this kind of situation. And we have seen a number of administrations in the past, including the immediate past administration, that tried making value addition to our principal primary products, you know. Uh, but I think uh, because of institutional limitations, uh, we couldn't achieve much. But I'm seeing more uh, silver lining you know, uh, in, in the cloud, as, 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 it, as it were now. Uh, one, uh, first, first, my concern really uh, came from, or rather derived from uh, the recent, this same uh, uh, foreign trade, foreign trade uh, figures. Out of the possible 19 trillion plus value of exports, you know, uh, that was exported out of items and goods and services exported out of Nigeria. The non oil sector was only responsible, just as I said earlier, for three trillion, three trillion of that 19 trillion naira value. So it tells us that um, uh, the, the, the volume, the larger volume of uh, the export trade was in the crude oil sector. And it's just crude oil, it's not, it's not even secondary products you know, derived from, from crude oil. So it's uh, the primary crude oil that were just pumped from the ground and then uh, filled in vessels and taken out of the country. So uh, we, we are disadvantaged and we have always been disadvantaged by that because that was taken out of the country. It will return to us, you know, in different forms of products. PMS, AGO, Jet A1, uh, kerosene, and all that. And the people who took it out as a primary product will bring them back with multiple secondary products and earn more than they bought from us. You know? So we are actually disadvantaged from the concepts already. So what we are supposed to use to balance that up would have been our 
you know, non-oil sector, uh, products, in, products and services in a non-oil sector. Poco, as you said, uh, we are doing, uh, the, I think, the first quarter, the first quarter exports of cocoa figures that we have is about 300 billion naira. While uh, Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Ghana, you know, are making more than $10 billion from exports, from, from processed exports of cocoa. Yes, they also, they also export uh, their primary products, but they have also found a way, you know, of processing those primary products to enhance value. So value is important, and it's not, it's not a government thing. Once we start adding value, we will also start experiencing increased activities in those segments of the, uh, of the economy. Now, the, a major reference is the, uh, the multi, the petrochemical subsector of the, of, of, uh, of the oil and gas industry. There was a time Nigeria was a beehive of petrochemical activities, trading commercial activities, where, and they were the source of, uh, uh, of uh, raw materials to the plastic industry, uh, to the lubricant industry, to the textile industry, and all that. Because we killed that segment, and because it was not properly focused in terms of management, although all the associated industries that were supposed to flourish within the context of petrochemical, you know, vanished. And when you have that huge sum or lump sum of industry vanishing, it impacts employment. It impacts wealth creation. You know, it impacts capacity to also export. Because again, in the 80s, I remember that most West African uh, countries and neighboring uh, countries come into Nigeria to buy, to purchase uh, rubber slippers, as they call them, love slippers, uh, textile materials, textile products, and all that, and take them out of the country. Those are uh, non-oil non uh, non exports, you know, and they would have been, uh, they were, of course, enhancing our foreign exchange at that time. So yes, we need to come to the table with even a psychological environment of how do we build our capacity to enhance the products we are, we, are, we are producing here, primary products, and the fact that by adding value to those primary products, we are actually enlarging the base you know, of our economy. Take a, a break now. Please stay with us. We'll be right back to continue this conversation and take calls from uh, home. Stay with us, please. you see destruction is because God is absent. There is no destruction in God. So who started killing from Genesis? 